Well, welcome back to the channel. It's quarter past seven in the evening and the weather forecast for tomorrow, again, is terrible. So let's go for a quick spin around the garden and I'll give you an August tour of the flower farm. Quarter past seven in the evening, lovely gloaming light, uh, but we'll have to be speedy Gonzales uh, because the forecast is more rain. So come on, let's go. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Uh, this is my usual hairy self. Uh, no hair and makeup here, just real flower farming as we go. So uh, do subscribe, press the bell icon, and I'll let you know when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club. And the link to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. Really, when I say no hair and makeup, I mean it. <laughs> now, remember last time, I've just made a clip about uh, cutting material for drying, and I've been out cutting a bit more. It's that time of year where every time there's a dry hour or two, I whip up the field and harvest anything that would be good to dry. So here we've got scabious, ping pong scabious. Uh, we've got lovely blue eryngium, beautiful, and lots more or very, very useful limonium, which I'll have for my Christmas, all of this goes in my Christmas, Christmas wreaths. So, you know, we're always planning ahead. Come on, let's go outside. It's been very, very wet. And so the grass has grown a lot. And we keep seeing lots of people who live in the longer grass verges, frogs, crickets, baby grass snakes, it's a world. So if you're thinking of mowing, we keep the paths mown at this time of year, but leave as much a bit longer as we can because it makes really good habitat for other people to live in. And that's very important here. Can you hear my stepdaughter mowing now up the field? She's just mowing around the paths. Um, I saw lots of frogs today and they disappear into the long grass. So keep a bit of long grass and they'll do well. You won't mow them up. And when you mow, see if you can set your mower slightly higher so you're not mowing too tightly. And that way you can mow over people. They can hold onto the ground and you can mow over them and not do them any harm. It's really worth thinking about. This time of year, there's a population explosion of wildlife here at Common Farm. It's mid-August and wildlife everywhere including tea cake come on teeks she's got her filthy face on she's not coming tea cake's my border terrier and the reason she's not coming is because this path has been mown and she doesn't like freshly mown grass i think it stings her feet right this is the entrance into the polytunnels and i'm just going to turn off my tap because we've cleared the big tunnel and i'm watering it ready to mulch it and we've got lots and lots of biennials to plant into it for next spring. At this time of year, with a lot of flower farmers, there's a sort of a break in the season. I've still got a bit of helichrysum in here and I'm harvesting that as I go, but you can see the space ready for the next crop to go in. So lots of people are planting their chrysanthemums or late crops of zinnias or cosmos or dahlias into their cleared tunnels. I'm leaping ahead to spring 2024 and I'll show you what I'm going to plant in here. So here we have lots of seedlings. I sowed some of these at a biennial seed, seed sowing demo I did on this channel a little while ago. Um, and here they are looking very happy. Sweet rocket. Honesty. And these are all going to get planted in the tunnel. If you watched the clip I made last time, my July garden tour, I'm sorry, I haven't got my uh, microphone, but I have to be opportunistic. And the microphone's run out of battery, but it's gonna pour with rain tomorrow. So I'm doing this now without a microphone. But anyway, look, do you remember last time I made a clip, my July tour, 
and there had been a very ra windy rainy night and I, as a big branch of my salvia had spun had been broken off so I took cuttings and the way to tell where the cuttings have rooted is to look at the bottom of the pot there they are so that's exciting I'll put them on eventually not now they're fine for the moment but sooner or later I'll give them their own pot also here I've got hollyhocks here um, and hollyhocks we are very we're warm here in the southwest of England but wet and very clay so I didn't know whether hollyhocks were going to do do any do good do well I'll be learning English later here at Common Farm so I did a trial and I planted a few hollyhocks around the back door and they've done really well over the last two or three years and they've begun to seed themselves around which is a sign to me that they're quite happy in my yard and one of my fantasies is that I would have hollyhocks hollyhock world as though I were some country farm in the Ile de Ray in France uh, so I've sown three more kinds of hollyhocks I've got white hollyhocks already going around there in the yard and I have sown a black one and a couple of peachy coloured ones to go into the yard. I like a bit of clash a rooney clash rama in my yard. And then some of these seedlings, some of these seed trays won't germinate now until next year. So I'll just leave them, keep an eye. Uh, I won't let them freeze too hard. So when the bad weather comes in the winter, I'll put them in the greenhouse, a cold greenhouse, not heated. Um, but I'm not going to over fuss with them. I'll make sure they don't dry out. And they should be all right. I've got all of these people in the shade here because when the sun does come out at this time of year, it's very hot. So a little gentle shade actually suits them really down to the ground. It protects them from too much rain. We've had a lot of rain and from too much sun. So it works very well. Anyway, come on, I'll show you the small polytunnel. So if you've been watching my clips through the summer, you'll remember that this had a great big long row of sweet peas in it. They have finished and so they've been taken out, which is great because it now means that the light can reach all the chilies and peppers, which are along the back there. And I've got tomatoes here. They're being very slow because we've not had enough heat, not, not enough sunshine. But I'm beginning to take a handful of tomatoes a day, which gives me great pleasure. Um, and a fun plant I have here. This is Nicandra fissiloides, shoe fly plant to you, madam. And these lovely seed pods dry really beautifully for Christmas. So I always, it seeds itself all over the place in here. And every year I keep two or three plants and I harvest these seed pods uh, for use on my Christmas wreaths. They're lovely. And we're gonna have a good, a good crop this year. Here, a close up of the Nicandra fissiloides, aren't they? Tr they're just so dramatic and charming. You can use them green, but I recommend you take most of the leaves off uh, because they tend to be a bit floppy. But aren't they gorgeous, the seed heads? Really dramatic. And they dry golden, gorgeous. And here we are up at the dahlias, coming along a treat, beginning to get into their stride, they are. <gasps> I love them. I love them, I love them, I love them. Uh, nice lot for harvesting tomorrow, I think. Uh, even if it is pouring with rain, I'll cut them, shake the worst of the water off them, and get them into the tunnel, get them into the studio, not overpacking the buckets too much, otherwise they'll bruise. Do you want to see my current favorite? I'm not going to cut it now, but I'll cut it tomorrow. This is, I'm shouting because I haven't got my microwave, my microphone. This is Evanna. And um, I first came across her 
when I was a judge of the Dahlia trials at RHS Wisley and uh, she was part of the trial. I'll be back up there week after next. So I'll show you which dahlias they've got in the trial this year and make a clip when I'm up there. Wisley is an amazing garden. It's worth a visit if you're ever in the southeast of England. It's a lovely time of day. Even if you can hear my stepdaughter rumbling around on the mower doing the paths. And you can see I've been up and down here with mum's old mower today. This is classic common farm flowers behaviour. You can always see when I had spare bits and nowhere to put them. Look, clearly I put a handful of glads in there just because I wasn't sure where to put them. And they're in with the Verbena bonariensis. The blue is Salvia alglinosa. Lots of white feverfew. And, oh, I do love the phlox. This patch is for annuals. And you can see I've got lots of lovely material coming up for late summer and early autumn. My season finishes at the end of September. August is always relatively quiet because everybody's on holiday. So the idea is to have lots and lots and lots to cut. September is our busiest month by, by a factor of 100%. I mean, it's just crazy busy. So I'm glad to see that the zinnias are just beginning a couple of weeks early, but that's plenty. I'll, I'll, I've got plenty of use for them before September really gets going. And come with me, I'll show you. Ooh, look, I'm picking you up. Uh, zinnias and then Statis. There, Statis. This is a great favourite of mine. Monada, bee balm, which really I grow as a... I grow it as, as foliage, although it has a very pretty sort of lilac coloured flower. It's got such lovely scent, the foliage. Um... So that'll be ready for September. Lots of Bells of Ireland. Dearly beloved Amaranthus. Lots of different kinds. Hilariously here, not planned at all. I've got sunflowers. I don't grow sunflowers. <laughs> I used to grow sunflowers, but you know, one is always uh, refining what one grows. And, um, and I never used to use them. I, I don't do farmer's markets. If I did farmer's markets, I would definitely grow them. I don't do farmer's markets. It's a different kind of a, a, a market for, for the different, you know, people, flower farms don't all grow all the same flowers and nor should they. Anyway, this seed must have been in the ground for years and it's just popped up. So I'm not gonna argue with it. I'll make the most of them, but I don't normally grow. I don't normally grow sunflowers. Here we've got the apricot cosmos. I'll cut you a bit. That everybody's growing this year. It's really pretty, I have to say. It, it's sort of um, neon. There's a bit of neon in it. So I really, I will definitely be growing it again. Definitely. And I'm sure all the other people who are growing it this year will grow it again. Um, it's just getting going and it's going to be really, really good. Here, not what you'd call a cash crop. Cobia scandens. Cup and saucer plant. Absolutely, this is the white variety. So I've got white on this side and purple on the other side of this old bit of climbing material. It's an old trellis. This is not what I would call a cash crop. Uh, a lost leader, perhaps. But one must grow what one loves, and I do love these. Look, how beautiful. Did you know that the reason I learned this from Derry Watkins of Special Plants, which is a lovely plant nursery north of Bath, and one day she and I were talking about Cobia scandens, and the reason the Cobia scandens flower is this size is because it is exactly the breadth, the width of the shoulders of the bat which pollinates it in its native South America. There you are. So then here, behind the hairy grasses, ideal place for a frog or a cricket or a 
grass snake or any number of other people to live are the shrubs and perennials patch where the roses are. Come on, I'll quickly show you. It's getting dark, but we'll go and have a look. It's just a big space with a lot of shrubs and perennials. It's not, they're not herbaceous borders, but they do have a certain grandeur to them, I think. If I, if I ever, if I ever had a, ra a grand garden, I would have a sweep of lawn like this with smart gates to some distant trees. At this time of year, it's worth walking around the edges of the farm a bit because there are lots of things that we've planted in the what we call the lugfall, in the wild edges, which also make great cutting, like this solidago, uh, which is wonderful in a, in a, as a cut flower, but we have it growing wild in the edges of the fields. Why do we need it using bed space when it's perfectly happy in the long grass? may as well let it do its own thing and then we don't need to garden it so much. Another useful person we have growing in the long grass is good old Crocosmia lucifer. Very useful as a cut flower but also really lovely when the seed heads develop. When these flowers go over they make wonderful arching stems of seed heads. So I keep an eye on these and actually, I'm li more likely to use the seed heads than I am as the flowers because I've got plenty of flowers. So I don't think of rushing up here to see what I've got. Whereas later on in the autumn, when I might be feeling a bit, uh, I need something different, I'll ping up here and here we have lots more. And on the subject of lots more, in this edge of the, this is the edge of the whole flower farm. It's a sort of 20, 20 foot band of trees that goes all the way around the edge of the, of the seven acres. And we have here all sorts of shrubs which make extra foliage. So when I feel as though I've really hammered my physocarpus and so on in the cut flower patches, I've got more up here so I can come up to the smoke. This is a lovely smoke bush. Um, so smoke bush, physocarpus darts gold, the gold one. The dark foliage behind is Physocarpus Diablo, all very useful foliage as we go into the autumn. And if I've been really cutting the, the bushes in the cut flower patches heavily during the summer, then I've got these as extras, very useful. And <laughs> apples, oh, they don't quite reach. I'll turn you around. And then here we have an apple tree. <laughs> because hunger is always a possibility. So um, we planted, we plant, this is a Bramley, a cooking. So uh, it's, we're gonna have a nice winter of lots of apple crumble. And then next job on the list, Mo next on the list, mowing the meadows. Fabrizio always does this in August. Uh, we need a few dry days, and I think we've got so, a few dry days coming up at the end of this week, so it'll be perfect timing because you need enough time to mow the meadow, leave it, leave the mowings for a day or two so that the seeds can drop down into the soil, toss the hay a little bit to make sure all the seeds have dropped, remove all the clippings. It's quite a process. And uh, so hopefully we've got some dry weather coming up because if you don't have dry weather and you start mowing this thatch, you just end up with a sort of mushy mess and that's no fun at all. So I uh, hope, wish us luck. A few dry days, please. And at this time of year, it's really worth keeping an eye on the hedgerows for interest. So look, lots of hawthorn berries coming along the hedges are heavy with hawthorn berries. And then further up there, that those are viburnum opulus, wild wayfaring viburnum. 
and the berries are very beautiful and great colour. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the clip. This purple person, or beauty beyond compare, is really a great favourite of mine. Purple loose strife. And we have it growing everywhere in our wild patches. Uh, it makes a wonderful cut flower and is much beloved of the brimstone butterflies, which are very, very bright chartreuse green. Uh, and so if I come around here in the daytime quite often, if, there's, if it's sunny in the unlikely event, then these tend to be covered in brimstone butterflies. Anyway, thanks for coming along and I hope you've enjoyed the clip. Uh, please do put comments below. I always answer the comments on my YouTube. Um, and uh, next time I might brush my hair. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.